Problem 5. How many subsets of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 contain at least one prime number? What is a prime number? A prime number is a number that can only be divisible by itself and 1. So how many of those numbers exist? Well, that's 2, 3, 5, and 7. Now, how do we find the number of subsets? A subset is basically, for example, 2, or like uh, 8 and 9, or etc, etc. How many of those cases exist? Well, the answer is 2 to the 8. And why is it 2 to the 8? You have to think about it in terms of possibilities for it to exist within the subset. What I mean by this is, let's consider 2. How many possibilities are there for 2 to be within a subset? Well, it's a binary universe, so what do we say? We say it either exists in the subset or it doesn't. For instance, consider the subset of 3 and 4. 2 does not exist, right? And that means that there's only one possible case for 2 to be in, which is the one possibility that it doesn't exist. But then there's 2 and 5, for example. 2 exists within a subset. So if there's the one possibility, again, that it is present within the subset. Actually, that's not a good example. It could be 2, 3, 4. Consider these two examples, not this one. 2 either exists within the subset right here, or it doesn't exist within the subset right here. So therefore, you have a total of two possible cases for 2, which is right here. And the same goes for 3, same goes for 4, same goes for 5, etc., etc. We have eight numbers. That's how you got 2 to the 8 power subsets. And this includes the null subset, which is the empty subset, which basically says there's no numbers within it. And that occurs when it's all um, the one possibility of it all being non-existent within the subset. Now that we have this out of the way, how many of the prime numbers do we have? We have four prime numbers. The reason why I'm doing complementary counting here is because, well, I'm about to do complementary counting. The reason why I'm doing it is because think about all the complexities here when you consider subsets. You can have a subset of 2, comma 3, but then we have a subset of 3, comma 2. They're both considered the same subset, so we have to consider and divide the, divide by 2, and etc., etc., and that's, that's going to take so much time, and when we go into like 3, like 2, 3, 5, or the combination of it, like 3, 2, 5, 5, 2, 3. That is so many like individual cases within individual cases, and it's so convoluted that we're just better off doing uh, complementary counting to save us some time, which is why I'm doing it right here. Now with this, how many of those subsets exists? Well, we want to subtract out the cases that we don't want, which is the, the number of subsets that does not contain any prime number. Well, if the prime numbers don't exist within a subset, what is their only possibility? Well, the only possibility is for them to not exist. So if we consider the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, again, this only has one possibility of existing, which is not existing. That's 1, that's 1, and that's or that not nine and seven is one. What I mean by one is is that there's only one there's only one state of being which is for them to not exist. So that's the probability um, an analogy for one. Now what about four? Well, four can either exist or not exist. Six can either exist or not exist. Eight can either exist or not exist. And nine can either exist or not exist. So we have multiply all this together. We have two to the four. So two to the eight minus two to the four will give us our answer. So what is two to the eight? Well, we know two to the ten is equal to one zero two four. Always remember this. So we divide by 2 squared, divide by 2 squared, which is equal to, if we divide by 2 first, that's 5, 1, 2. 5, 1, 2 divided by 2 minus 2 to 4, well, 2 to 4 is 16, and this is equal to 2, 5, 6 minus 16, which is 240, which is your final answer, which is D.